Good morning. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the Down Payment Towards Equity Act of 2021. For those of you that don't know that, uh, what this is or where it's coming from, it is a twenty dollars to $25,000 grant that would assist you with a uh, purchasing a home if it's your first time. But there are um, specific criteria. First thing I want to make very, very clear. Everybody's talking about this across YouTube. Look, this is only an idea. It has not passed legislation. There is no plan. There is no bill. Uh, it's certainly going to be more than three pages. And so this is what they're considering. That's all it is. It's like notes on toilet paper. It's not, it's worthless. It's not even, it's not even out there yet. And, and so I can assure you that if the official report that I have here is only three pages, that's not, <laughs> that's not all of it. Trust me. So this could be a while, but if it does work out, I will definitely let everybody know. So where is this coming from? Let's go back over here to the White House, the American Jobs Plan, all the stuff in the news, including the infrastructure plan. So all these neat little names they give, these are little subtitles inside of, these are the bullet points of the American Jobs Plan. When you look up uh, the infrastructure plan, the reason you can't find it is because they're not referring to that being an actual real plan. They're actually referring to it as that's what Joe Biden is planning. That's why you can't find it when you look up the legislation that way. All these things are rolled into the American Jobs Plan. Just want to be clear. Number two, again, I repeat, do not contact me about this. It means you didn't watch the video, you, did, you didn't listen, okay? This is not ready to go. It has not passed legislation. You cannot use this yet, okay? And we don't know if it will, will pass, all right? So beyond that, let's get into what the Down Payment Towards Equity Act of 2021 does and who it's for. And it's pretty interesting. So... We go down here. Uh, so, first thing you need to know is it will be issued um, to every state, but the states must apply. Just like the rental assistance uh, aspect we had uh, over from 2020 to 2021, not every state and county applied to the Treasury to receive those funds, and thus a lot of people didn't get rental assistance. Now, here we are with this, and I can tell you the same thing is going to play out. They'll pass this, but a lot of states and counties will be too lazy to apply or for whatever reason don't. And guess what? You're not going to be able to utilize that. So if it does come to fruition, then make sure you check with your state to see. What can this work in combination of or in lieu of? Well, you've got first-time buyers. You know, when you when you use that when the first time buyers you get a couple of grand back anywhere from three to eight thousand, then it can also work in lieu of uh, the USDA loan, which means you live outside the city limits, and then they give zero down zero interest, and then you have this grant here twenty twenty five. So I would say this is a triple to a four stack, which means it's a perfect hurricane of discounts and tax approval that you could possibly get to buy a house. So if this comes around. That's quite a stack, and I'm unsure whether or not you'll be able to stack all these things. I'm only suggesting that it's a possibility. I would, if we can, then I would suggest that we do, you know. So for now, let's take a look. Um, who is it administered by? It's going to be administered by HUD, and the reason, the purpose is, is not because everybody that gets a HUD voucher or a Section 8 voucher doesn't mean you can go out and buy a home. You guys have the wrong idea. You still have to be a qualified home buyer. In other words... Yes, this grant is specifically designed to help people give them the money if you can qualify. So you would have to have a minimum score, and yes, you have to have a job. You having a voucher loan or uh, having a HUD house or a project-based housing by itself does not qualify you to, to purchase a home, okay? And we'll get into that in a minute. So beyond that, uh, they would be prohibited from essentially giving this, giving priority to people that attend to be rich already. So if you go through normal channels, say you go through the bank and you're, let's see, let's you're 45 and you're an engineer and you're a white man, you probably don't have a really good chance of getting this grant, okay? And so that bank's not going to be able to give uh, you a high priority. The bank, this is designed to give priority to the poorest people, the people with the least amount of anything and then given an opportunity to purchase a home. Why? Because we're out by a housing crisis. That makes sense. So uh, I would imagine that the last consideration will likely be given to Caucasian people or white people, all right? Because there are a lot of other people that simply don't have the means to get this, including other races, all right? Um, going on, it will be administered by HUD. That means it has to be fair and equal, unless we have a different president that changes the rules, and that can always become a possibility, you know, in the next couple of years. 
Uh, anyways, any of the funds that are not used, we have not determined budget for this, but any of the unused funds would go back to the state. And then the funds must be used solely to assist the home buyer's purchase of the home. So you can put the money towards purchasing the home, the down payment assistance, the closing cost, and or the possibility to reduce interest rate on your mortgage. So once you purchase the home, you may say, oh, I don't want to use it to actually purchase the home. I like to use it just to reduce the mortgage. It seems a bit convoluted, convoluted to do it that way, but, you know, you can do it that way. Grand, uh, grantees may not use more than 5% of their amount to for administrative costs. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is this is the reason why they're not going to allow this grant to be administered by nonprofits and charities because um, they have a tendency to go out and buy chandeliers, uh, the best computers, and leather sofas when, in fact, they're not helping the poor. We see that play out a lot with nonprofits and charities. That's that's why the states and counties will likely be in charge of it. And to be frank with you, they're not that much better at administering funds either. Okay, eligible recipients. This is the part you guys are going to want to know about. So under this act, this can be provided to first-time home buyers who meet the income requirements and qualify as to what the terms of first-generation home buyers are. Home first-time home buyers are those who do not own a home in the prior three years. If you didn't buy a home last three years, you qualify. But there are other things here that are going to disqualify. In um, in regarding of income, home buyers it must have an income below 120 percent of the median area income (AMI). In other words, 120 percent. That's a tough rule to beat. You got to be pretty pretty poor, okay? So we'll have to figure that out city by city, town by town, because one, uh, the area medium income is different for almost nearly every zip code in the country, and there's 60,000 zip codes. So that, I can't give you a direct answer about that, and that could change later. But I can tell you right now, that's going to pretty much, if they're planning on implementing 100%, 120% below medium area income, it would likely mean that you could probably have a credit score of about 500, and then you would likely be able to work at Taco Bell. That's not intended to, to hurt anybody's feelings or whatever. But what I'm saying is if you manage to get if you manage to get a loan for a home, this grant could be used for that. And you likely would probably have pretty it would probably take people with fairly bad credit, okay? So in the act's definition of a first uh, generation home buyer is an individual or parents or guardian. So if you're still alive and you haven't purchased them last uh, three, you know, three to five years, then it, that would be applicable to you. Uh, never owned a home uh, during the home buyer's lifetime. And so they use some tricky language here. The act is definition of first generation home buyer is any individual whose parents or guardians never owned their own home during the home buyer's lifetime or previously owned a home during the home buyer's lifetime but lost the home to foreclosure, short sale, uh, deed in lieu of uh, foreclosure, and, and do not currently own the home. To put that very simply, and, and you know, I don't know why they can't put things straightforward. Look, if you haven't, if you lost a home to foreclosure, then that's what it is. If you haven't bought a house in the last three years, then you can get it. You know, if you meet the AMI rules, which could potentially change. And then we're going to go down. Home uh, home buyers may receive a twenty thousand assistance or twenty five thousand assistance if the buyer qualifies as a socially and economically disadvantaged. So I'm going to put this very clearly here in a minute. The act defines socially disadvantaged individuals as those who have been subjected, remember the term, subjected to racial or ethnic prejudice, cultural bias because of their identities as a member without regards to and also individual qualities. An economically disadvantaged individual who is one who meets the bill's income requirements. So let's get right to the point. They do a lot of a lot of talking about this. Um, any individual identifying as a a black person, Hispanic person, Asian person, Native American person, or any combination of that. Now, those of you that wanted to sign your uh, income tax return is only white and not white and Mexican. You're not regretting that, aren't you? I'm only joking, and again, it's not designed to to, to offend anybody. So, in other words. Um, Everybody on the planet can likely get this except for most white folks. So that's a, this is a tough video to make. But again, it does help Caucasian people. You just need to be a low income. So you have to see the humor in that. So, you know, the thing about it is they want to help people that are at the HUD level where you're kind of struggling to make ends meet and you want to get a place to live. And so this grant would help you with it. But remember, this is not a home loan. This is just a grant towards the home loan. Uh, funds can, um, let's see. So, anyways, the funds can be used to assist in the purchase of any home bought with a mortgage. So, I understand this grant's not a home loan. It is a grant additional money towards your actual loan. 
Uh, so you can use this to assist with uh, Penny Mac, Penny Mac, um, Pretty Mac. The insurance, uh, you can also be using this with your insurance for FHA and USDA loans. So if you manage to get an FHA loan or USDA loan, then this would be something you could use the money towards. Uh, and it also if it meets the definition of a qualified mortgage. So once you go and you manage to be able to qualify for a real mortgage, you may take this chunk of money and you may put it towards it. So i got to clarify three different times, this is not a home loan. This is a grant that helps you with a home loan. So you have to go pre-qualify yourself first to buy a home. And if you manage to have a good enough, um, if you have the right amount of money and you have uh, the right amount of down payment and all that, then you can use this to help pay for part of that, okay? That's all that it does. Any individual who receives uh, a commitment of assistance under the program but for whose uh, mortgage application is denied shall be referred to a HUD-approved counseling agency for the purchase of uh, in other words, this is really just saying you have to take counseling. Anytime you purchase a home, you have to take counseling. In this case, if you're going to use this grant, you'll also be required to get a counseling at HUD, what it means to be a homeowner, the consequences of not paying your bills, and stuff like that. That's the reason they do that. There's counseling for everything on this planet, trust me. <laughs> okay, repayment of assistance. Now, this is where it gets sticky. Home buyers receiving uh, assistance under this act would be required to pay back all assistance if if they received or if they stopped occupying the home in the last year. Let me just make something clear. As you read this, it tells you that, and then it goes on and tells you something different three, three lines later. Let's get to the point. Uh, the amount of the home buyer would be required to pay back would decrease 20% for each year they live in the home, and there would be no penalty after five years. Why can't they just start with, look, here's the deal. If you use this money, 25000 you purchase a home, you better hang on to it exactly five years. If you don't, each year you jump out of that house, you go to sell that house early. So if you hold it for four years, then you're going to lose 20% of your money. So each year you lose 20% or you gain 20% of your money. In other words, they'll sell you a home in five years. That's all that that means. And so that concludes it. That That's your three pages of wonder. This is what this is what all the, uh, the hustlers on YouTube are clamoring about and Heads are bobbing and lips are popping uh, right now because they want to make some money off the YouTube ads, you know. So they're talking about this. Look, guys, it's just an idea. <laughs> it's an idea written on toilet paper that has not been passed. It can't do anything for you, and likely this thing will evolve. The Probably the only thing that's going to remain the name is going to remain the same is going to be the name. So I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, this does roll out and... So you have an army of people that write legislation, and so this will this will become like a telephone book. And when it reaches that point and actually passes uh, the House and Congress, then we'll come back and address it for what it really is. But I think it's going to help uh, people that uh, are extremely low income. And uh, it's a big chunk of money, and there's going to be a lot of rules behind it. That's if you can qualify to buy a home. So, hey, guys, if you have questions, that's fine, but don't contact me about getting $25,000, especially after I made this video and told you that it's not even real yet. All right? Y'all have a good day. Bye.